Hi, welcome to the Misfit Publishing Book Club. I am your host, S.R. Mori, and today we'll be looking at The Veil of Stars, Chapter 16, Freedom. This chapter uh, is kind of catching up on one of the other storylines going on in the book, and it is important to note that originally, like when I was like three fourths of the way through writing uh, part one, I still hadn't decided like, oh, Hale's going to be is going to survive this, and you know at that point both of the parents were going to die, uh, but it was by me deciding to include Zach, who I had already written some stuff later in the storyline for, you know, the book's overall storyline for, uh, I decided that I wanted to bring him into more stories by stretching him further back. Because um, I was kind of writing the end of his journey. And so that's kind of where that all came from. And in this chapter, we get some of Zach's origin story. I didn't want to go all the way back uh, because that would have been before the events of this book, and um, so we do get kind of a bit of his rather grim origin, or childhood, I should say, uh, which is referenced uh, throughout the next book as well. It's probably something that you want to remember, as it does affect the motivations of a character that I would consider one of the biggest three characters of the Narbad saga. So, um, I would definitely remember, you know, Zach's horrible past uh, with the orphanage, with his parents dying of illness, uh, his time in the militia, you know, why he was kicked out, his friends that he helps along the way. Um, although it is quite dark, it is... I mean, this is a character that... Zack kind of represents a lot of maybe the, the things that Christians don't want to think about, right? So a lot of what happens to Zack in his life, including his childhood, are things that will probably make most Christians that haven't necessarily been challenged a lot in their faith to hopefully ask the questions that they should ask because inevitably, life will uh, rear its ugly face, and it will challenge your faith. And you're going to have to answer difficult questions that you might not have very easy answers to, or even answers at all. And so, one of the purposes of Zack as a character, uh, both at this stage in his journey and at the end, is to get people in general to think about the questions, ethical questions, that maybe aren't necessarily comfortable or things that we want to think about, but they're things that need to be thought about. And I, th I don't know, the people, a lot of the people that I'm around in life, they don't want to think about these things. They don't want to think about policies that are being made that affect certain demographics, they would rather just not deal with the drama, uh, not deal with the conflict, and just pretend that it's not there, or to intentionally have a willing ignorance to what's going on because it's too upsetting, and they feel that they can't do anything about it. And, you know, part of Zach's point is, is you know, the existence of his character, the point is, like, get over it. It is here, and if you don't do something about it, it's all like it's all gonna come crash. Everything that you enjoy could come crashing down if you continue to not care about the things that are going on. And so, hopefully, Zach's origin is tragic enough where it's like it's making you think about some things that we should think about. You know. The stuff that's happening to Zach and the orphanage is not not unheard of. In fact, there's a story that came out this week about, 
you know, two dads that adopted two kids and were, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go through it because it's so heinous. But this is stuff that we need to talk about. Stop. We need to stop saying buts and like, oh, well, but this happens. Like, stop. It, we need to do something about it. Zach does something about it. He is a character that sees injustice in the world and does something about it. That's the point of the character. That's why I love him so much. Another reason why, this is kind of a bunny trail, but this is what this book club is for, you know. Another reason why I love Zach so much is because he's going to tell you the way that it is. And we need people like that. And, and he takes action. He doesn't just whine about stuff, but he takes action to actually stop it. You know, he's so disgusted by injustice that he has to go and do something about it. Consequences be damned. And it's and that's one reason that's one of the reasons I really love him. Another reason I really love him is he sees he sees himself as so unworthy of grace. Because he thinks that he's a monster. But in reality, He's a good kind of monster. I think we need monsters like that who are actually going to do something about the bad things, the things that most people don't have the spine to do. And I'm not saying that we need a bunch of vigilantes out there, but I'm also not saying that maybe, maybe we sometimes do need someone that is not afraid to take the law into their own hands and punish the people that need punishing because I think in our society we don't punish enough and I think a lot of times we punish things that don't necessarily need to be punished um, too much and so Zach Zach is one of those characters that I just deeply love because he sees injustice and he takes action he doesn't feel worthy, uh, yet he is so worthy, uh, you know, as much as a mortal can be, which is to say, you know, still not worthy, but he's certainly more worthy of it than I am, um, and I think most people are. I think in modern Christianity, we put too much emphasis on this helpless pacifism. Pa is that how you say it? It's like, no, you do need people that are going to go and get it done, you know? Like peace and love and all that. But sometimes, if you actually want results, you're going to have to do something unsavory. And Zach is the person that is going to do that. It's like, oh, look, I get it. We can't have people breaking people's bones all over the place. Like Zach, you know. But... Sometimes you need action, and I'm not. It doesn't have to be in modern society. It doesn't have to be like violent action. Most people, though, they don't do anything. They just sit there and they intentionally ignore what's going on. And I think, at the very least, you, we, should be well educated on what's going on and vocal about it. Because if enough people did that, the change would happen. And it's because nobody does that that I think that people like Zach are sometimes necessary. You know, that's another thing about Zach. Is, you know, the fluffy answer would be, well, if we all just think this way, then, you know, it'll all be good. Zach's like, well, that's never going to happen. So I need to take action because nobody else is going to. And, you know, that's... I just love this character so much. And I know... I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself in terms of what you guys have at this point read in the book, but just just know that Zach is I he is probably my favorite character to write, and uh, his journey is going to be very touching and very heart wrenching, and uh, I hope I really hope that people enjoy and and get something out of him because. I do genuinely believe that part of my purpose in writing these books is to
help people, you know, deal with the tough questions to, you know, life is going to kick you down and to the person that hasn't gone through the ringer, who hasn't, in my case, watched their mother slowly die and suffer before his very eyes because of false promises by the church, I hope that this book, that this series, that Zach as a character will help equip you to answer the questions that are tough so that you don't have to go through those questions alone like I did. Um, I know that, that, that this is, you know, I'm breaking a cardinal rule, you know, you're not supposed to bring up these sorts of things, you know, when you're running a business, but at the end of the day, you know, I want, that's the reason I'm not writing these books purely because I love it, I do love it, but also because I do genuinely want to help people and I think that I'm uniquely equipped to do that. Um, so hopefully, you know, hopefully you end up liking Zach if you don't already. Um, I know he's a little controversial because he does curse and he is very violent. But that's part of the beauty of the character, you know. It's, you know, as a Christian writer, people are like, well, why do you, why does, why do some of your characters curse? I'm like, well, some people curse. Not everybody's me. Not everybody, and I know occasionally I do curse, but, you know, I, I cursed in this video. But not everybody's like me. Not everybody should be like me. That wouldn't make an interesting book. People are messy. Lives are messy. And I just think that Zach is a character that is going to, at the end of the day, at the end of the story, you know, not necessarily this book, but the end of the whole story, he's a character that hopefully... makes you uncomfortable, but in a good way. His story makes you, even if it's briefly, think about things that make you uncomfortable because it's better that we think about these things at the top of the hill so that whenever we're in the valley, we've already thought through some of it, right? I don't know, that's what, I wish I would have had something like that. So hopefully... You know, I don't know. It's a passion of mine. I, I really, I don't know how to convey it, but I genuinely just really hope that it helps somebody, you know, even one person, because I don't want anyone to go through some of the things that I had to go through um, to get myself in the place where I could write that character. And that wording makes it sound like I intentionally did it, but I things I went through were not of my choosing. But I hope, I hope that it helps somebody. The next section we see uh, Karim and Is kind of each, you know, in the same room, but they're both creating their own, like, they're both plotting their own little plans of betraying each other and how they're going to solve the situation at hand and, um, you know, typical villain stuff. And we get some pretty good insights from Karen before Is shows up as well. And then the last section we have Zach and Hale have their chains broken. Which is why the chapter is called Freedom. Um, which, you know, now Zach is free. So his story really can begin anew. Now you have the context of maybe why he's a little bitter, why he's a little angry, why he sees the world the way he sees it. And uh, it's going to set up a lot of things. Obviously, their story's not done for this book yet. Uh, we've still got a few checkups on them before the end of that. And in the next book, um, you'll get to know these two characters even more. There's one chapter in particular in the next book where you enter the city in Hale's per mind, right? His perspective. And then the second half of the chapter, Zach goes through the exact same street. And you can kind of see the difference of how somebody's worldview and how they see things uh, can lead to completely different interpretations of what is going on. You know, Hale has that 
very optimistic, I'm going to see the good in people approach. And Zach's like, what good does that do me? I need to be ready. And so I'm going to see the world for the way it is. And uh, so he notices things that Hale doesn't. And uh, I, don't, I just think they're a really interesting pair. And uh, hopefully they continue to be uh, something you look forward to reading. Have a nice week. I'll see you next week. And uh, take care of yourself.